So hello, everyone, and welcome. It's so great to be here with all of you to talk about um, with my beautiful friends and colleagues, co-collaborators in the mystery, Janet Connor and Emma Kupu Mitchell, two women I love so much. And um, we're here today to tell you about something really magical and wonderful that Janet and Emma really have cooked up and I've been lucky enough to help nurture along the songline, remembering the songlines of the witches, which I just want to say by way of introduction is a word of very mysterious origins. As long as there has been language, there have been many words for the women who, like us, listen to the moon, talk to the stars, feel the medicine in the plants. And um, the word witch comes directly from the old English word Wicca. But where that word came from, no one knows, which I love. But very recently, just a few centuries ago in our many, many millennia on this planet, we don't even know for sure how many, but I did read that just recently we found um, a child who was buried in Africa 78,000 years ago. So far, that is the oldest record we have of someone who was buried with love, with ceremony, with compassion. So we know we've been here at least 10 times longer than the relatively brief part of our time on this planet when we've had weapons and when we've had war. And that time is the same time that the word witch slowly, slowly has become a word intended to demonize, intended to create fear, intended to be an excuse for harm and for terror. And the astrology of now, the language of the stars. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Marsha Wade. Many more people know me as Star Sister than as Marsha Wade. And I've been listening. Even before I knew they had a language, I was listening to them as a child. And since the very first time I ever had my astrology chart read, which was 40 years ago, I've been learning everything I could, which is kind of an endless quest about the stars and how we are connected to them, how we are all woven into the great mystery. And of course, the longer I do that, the more I think the cosmos herself, she's the alpha witch, you know, because this great mystery is so full of magic. But in this time, in this year, when we are really at a turning point, we are poised to take a leap into a new way of being human on this planet. It's no accident that at this moment, when we're poised to step into a new era of consciousness, the witch is coming up and all that that word witch has meant. We just had only three weeks ago, a very, very powerful lunar eclipse that has its origins the, in the year that the very first witch trials ever held on this planet happened. So we have all just participated in a massive collective release of 594 years of demonizing and fearing the power that has always been associated not only with women, but primarily with women. There has always been seen a special connection between women and this power to 
come into resonance with the great mystery so that things happen that otherwise would seem impossible. And so in this year, when the witch is up, I wasn't surprised at all to hear that Emma and Janet had been hearing the call of the witch and were feeling the call to invite all who hears it to, to join in holding space for a new relationship with the witch, the witch within us, the witch among us, the great cosmic witch in all her forms. And so with that brief introduction, that's why we're here to tell you about this call to remember the song lines of the witches. And so, Janet, I'm going to turn it over to you now because um, you're the, the witch dreamer. Here. I am so a witch. And uh, the first thing I'd love to do is bring in, I do have a wild story to tell you, but before the story, would you join me in welcoming the greatest mystic witch of all time? This is my sister, my beloved Jeanne d'Arc. And she woke me up in the middle of the night a year and a half ago at the beginning of my first offering, the return of the witches, Jeanne d'Arc listening pilgrimage. And she dictated her invocation because Janet could never have come up with this. And I now, I say this every single day. I say it in my witches rosary circle. I will be, this will be our prayer as we gather in remembering the songlines of the witches. So if you want to just let these words wash over you, and as they wash over you, feel her. Feel her entering the room on her massive white charger. Jeanne d'Arc, Jeanne d'Arc, woman of mystery. Jeanne d'Arc, Jeanne d'Arc, woman my heart. You listened to your voices. I am listening to mine, and you call me. You call me, daughter, go on. Go on, go on, go on, be not afraid. I go before you. The path is clear. The crown is yours. Jeanne d'Arc, Jeanne d'Arc, woman of mystery. Jeanne d'Arc, Jeanne d'Arc, woman of my heart. Give me the courage. Grant me the grace to see what wants to be seen, to hear who wants to be heard, and to do what must be done. Jeanne d'Arc, Jeanne d'Arc, woman of mystery, Jeanne d'Arc, Jeanne d'Arc, queen of my heart, rien de mon coeur. That's how I feel about Jeanne. And it is, we're having this conversation because of her. Marcia said, you know, Janet and Emma cooked this up. Janet and Emma simply responded, because <laughs> you kind of have to, when Jeanne crashes into your life and tells you what to do. So this story is wild, but it's exactly what happened. Susie von Menzenkamp, who was a central person in the Return of the Witches pilgrimage last summer. She received her call to become a medium during that pilgrimage. She is a Vedic instructor, the first person in all of Ireland to receive all of Deepak Chopra's mm, credentials. That might not be the right term. She's a very famous Ayurvedic, Vedic, astro not astrology, sorry. That's Marcia and Emma. Um, teacher and she has come to some of my previous prayer intenses now try to picture this she's sitting in her meditation room in cork ireland eyes closed meditating and suddenly <laughs> shendark rides crashes into the room on this enormous white horse and looks down, poor, poor Susie's looking up, huh? oh, yeah, okay, oh, what is this? And from the top of her horse, 
And keep in mind, Susie did not know Jeanne had a massive white war horse, a massive white charger. One of Jeanne's many witchy mysteries is she's a peasant girl. She never picked up a sword. She never rode a horse. Bingo! <laughs> she demands a war horse, gets on this massive white charger and commands it perfectly, leads her army to victory after victory after victory. But Susie didn't know that. So poor Susie's looking up at her, huh? and Jen starts to say, 12 dark moons, 12 moons, 12 cycles, 12 witches, 12 gifts, 12 shadows, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. 12. And she says, it's a mystery school, and it's an initiation. And poor Susie's just kind of going, what, what? And so Jen says, I guess she can tell Susie doesn't get it. She says, Call Janet, she'll know. So Susie called me, and I did know. This is not Janet's idea. This is not Emma's idea. This is not Marcia's idea. This is Jeanne d'Arc's idea. And when the greatest mystic witch of all time, who, if you know anything about her, is generally perceived to be the reincarnation of Mary Magdalene, I tell you, if the Magdalene and... and the queen of my heart wants something, I just get to work. And so Susie and I had a few conversations about what, what, what does Jen want? What initiation? What do you mean? And we slowly, you know, we're trying to massage this thing. We were calling it Witches Rising. Well, then she, Jen sends her astrology sister. And this is when things really get interesting. I have a dear friend in Vermont, Kathy Pratt, and Kathy was doing her deep soul writing. And suddenly, and, and that's if you don't know me, this is how most people know me. I stumbled upon how to drop into the mystical theta brainwave state while writing the threshold between worlds that became the book, Writing Down Your Soul. I started teaching it um, 12 years ago in 2008, and that's how most people know me there's lots of other books and lots of other events but it's deep soul writing that people go oh janet so kathy pratt's doing her deep soul writing and suddenly on the page pops black moon lilith have you ever had a conversation with black moon lilith i've never had a conversation with black moon lilith there's black moon lilith telling kathy to contact janet now, why Black Moon Lilith and Jen needed these intermediaries, I don't know, but I am so grateful. My knowledge of Black Moon Lilith, you know, was like this big. But Black Moon Lilith was clear that she is central to this thing that Susie and I are trying to create. So you know what I did. I contacted Emma Kupu Mitchell faster than my fingers could type. Emma, Emma. Emma, Black Moon Lilith? Who's Black Moon Lilith? What is this all about? And then Emma brought us the juice. And so it became this delicious, witchy, mystic, female trinity of Susie the Medium, Janet, prayer artist and mystic witch, and the incomparable Emma Kupu Mitchell bringing us the moon. And in the end, remembering the song lines of the witches, is about the witches but our teachers are four moons the dark moon that initiates every cycle and brings us the medicine of a witch our natal moons our sweet sweet natal moons and black moon lilith she's the mystery she holds and you this this shadow self this frightened witch self this witch wild feminine magnificent self that it has not been safe to express if you're here with me if you love marcia if you love emma my guess would be that we know each other very very well lots and lots and lots of lifetimes of being persecuted as witches so wisely when we arrived lifetime after lifetime after lifetime we might have said <coughs> Not this time, <laughs> not this time. And so Black Moon Lilith, if you've seen her on your natal chart, she's a 
little moon with the cross of matter hanging down. She's been waiting and waiting. You've been waiting. We have been carrying this magic in our natal charts, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So remembering the songlines of the witches is probably more the Black Moon Lilith show than anything else. She's waiting. So we're going to meet 11 witches who have died, 11 witches from the past. And each one of them coming in on a particular dark moon is going to bring us a little seed, medicine. And lunar cycle by lunar cycle, we're going to embody that medicine. But those 11 medicines are all to preparation to turn to the future. The 12th witch, the Black Moon Lilith witch, the mystic witch you came here to be. And being filled with these 11 medicines, we're just going to open our minds, our hearts, our bodies, and our souls and say yes. Yes, yes, yes. And that is our initiation. So what do you say we have chats with Emma, who is my depth numerologist, shamanic astrologer, moon maven, plant moon medicine whisperer. She creates all of the sacred oils for all of my events, including remembering in cahoots with Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene dictates the formula, but she's the first person <clears throat> that brought me the magic of Black Moon Lilith. Emma? Janet, I think that's great, but before we move to Emma, I'd love for you to share the definition oh but a witch is what that word means to you uh, and, and we have to have another crazy story you know i just my life is filled with the craziest stories but i adore them all so uh, my book writing down your soul was coming out with a relaunch 12th anniversary in 2020 and my publisher said janet these endorsements you have from when the book came out, we got, I think we gathered them in 2007 or 2008. They're old, get some new ones, will you? I'm like, oh, okay, I'm on it. So I sent emails to Perdita Finn, who led us in the Rosary Intensive. Emma wrote a magnificent endorsement, Clark Strand, and Rabbi Tirza Firestone. She had led us in this fabulous um, tree of life prayer intensive. So email comes from Rabbi Tirza and the opening sentence, I'm sitting right here. I open my email, burst into tears. The opening sentence is Janet Connor is a prayer artist, scholar, and 21st century witch. I just burst into tears. I'm alone in this room and I'm screaming, she sees me. She sees me, Tirsa sees me, somebody sees me. I was ecstatic. So I bundled up all my new endorsements and sent them to my publisher who was thrilled and my agent who was not. And she said, you cannot allow someone to call you a 21st century witch. I said, excuse me, this is the best endorsement I have ever received in my entire life from a famous, magnificent author. And yes, I will use this endorsement. And she kept pushing me and fighting me and sending me articles about 21st century witches. And I came to a stunning realization that I have to fire my agent. This is kind of a big deal. This is a big deal for an author. And I have to do it. So I sent the email and I fired her. And two days later, in the middle of the night, because this is where I get massive amounts of voice, suddenly I was receiving a whole new writing form for children. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't write children's books. <laughs> I guess I do now. And so that's all in process. So I threw myself into this witch thing. Well, if you're going to understand witch, 
you go here to Max Dashu, this astonishing book, Witches and Pagans. Now, this is a slog. I'll be honest about that. It's a slog. It's the etymology of this word across languages. Go anywhere. Ireland, Scotland, Iceland, Finland, Germany, France, African languages. Which, 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 which? What's the root? What's the root of this word? So <laughs> I slogged my way through this. I'm grateful for every page because I needed, it was like, it's like food. Slowly I was feeling my way into this word, which. This is a title. It's an honor. This word, which, acknowledges all of our feminine sacramental gifts. And it comes from the moon. What does the moon teach us? Turning and returning, turning and returning, we are born and reborn. From the dark moon cycle to the fullness to the dark moon cycle, life, death, and rebirth. This is the greatest teaching of the moon. Well, the word, even though it sounds very different in Russian and it sounds very different in German and it sounds still at its, at its etymological, it means turning and returning. So we women visualize, we are the ones who, here, Hildemore, show them, You've got your little distaff here. This is the greatest mystic witch um, needle felt doll of all time made by a fabulous witch in England, Polly Patton Brown. And when she sent the witch, she sent her with her distaff, right? So this is what we did. Guys weren't creating the thread, the cloth, the fabric, the clothes, and we created in turning and returning the baskets and the belts and the bracelets and the strings and as we did this because it's a it's slow work right try to imagine us in let, let's just say 1200 we are turning and returning we're turning the wool into thread and then we're weaving it and we're making rugs and cloth and belts and we're weaving the willow into baskets we're turning and returning turning and returning well you're sitting there with your women friends with your mother your grandmother your daughters what are you going to do you're going to sing you're going to chant you're going to pray visualize a more modern quilting bee you're chatting, you're talking, you're singing, you're praying. We infused our fabric, our cloth, our clothes, our belts. We infused everything with prayer. So of course we're witches. Everything we made, everything we did, everything we gave to the people we loved, the baskets that held the grain, the clay that held the food and cooked the food. Everything we did was infused with love, with prayer. The holiest thing anything anybody can call you in any language is a witch. So I made my like, whoa, okay, I'm a witch. And I started to use the term and I it took me a few months to feel my way into, well, what kind of a witch am I? Because I don't do the, you know, rituals, go outside, you, you know, the, the way a lot of people talk about witches today, which is lovely, but, but that's not me. So what kind of a witch am I? And it took me a while in deep soul writing, but I'm a mystic witch. Because I'm all about the mystic, which is dropping into the thresholds between worlds. Now, I recommend that everybody figure out for themselves, what kind of witch are you? but I'm a mystic witch. So as a prayer artist, you heard Marcia introduce me and, and uh, Rabbi Tiritsa said prayer artist. That was my first surprise. That came in the middle of the night in 2018. I heard clearly in my left ear prayer artist and I completely upended my life. Okay, you want me to be a prayer artist? I guess I'm your prayer artist. Well, as a prayer artist, I had to redefine prayer because if you open the dictionary, Good heavens. 
the definition of prayer is basically supplication, so all you can do is beg, a um, external God, they don't even have to say male God, that's taken for granted, following a formula. Does that sound like fun? Does that sound thrilling? Does that sound like something you want to do? That's the definition in the OED. So I redefine prayer. Prayer is love, song, sacred medicine. I have six definitions. And they're all like, woo, of course we want to pray. So when witch came, I went, oh, I guess I have to redefine witch. So I started to play with it. I started to play with it. And I came within, I don't know, a few months with this definition, thanks to slogging my way <laughs> to all of these beautiful words. A witch is a woman. Now, of course, men can be witches. But 85% of the people tortured, murdered, burnt at the stake were women. The word, if you open the dictionary, what is a witch? It's going to say a, demo, a woman using, doing harm, doing evil with demonic powers. So I'm sticking with woman. So a witch is a woman who's spiritually independent. You, I don't think you can be a witch and stay within the constriction of patriarchal, hierarchical, shut up and obey, coming from, at, you can't. That, that's what patriarchy wants. Patriarchy wants you to stay in that lesser obedient place. So woman, spiritually independent, who prays in the thresholds between worlds. And why? Because prayer, real prayer, my kind of prayer, those six definitions, you drop, oh my goddess, you just drop into the mystical theta brainwave state. The same way deep soul writing drops you into the mystical theta brainwave state. So praise in the threshold between worlds could be creates in the thresholds between worlds, soul rights in the thresholds between worlds, dances in the thresholds between worlds, meditates in the thresholds between worlds. You can drop into the mystical theta brainwave state many, many, many times. But I think at its core, everything we do is prayer. Deep soul writing is prayer. Meditating is prayer. Dancing is prayer. So I'm, in order to not have a definition that goes on and on and on, I say praise in the thresholds between worlds. That's my definition. And I, I've been presenting that now for about a year in my prayer intensives. And then it just happened. One day in deep soul writing, I wrote it vertically. W, woman, independent, spiritually independent, who prays in the, this, this is sign language, who prays in the thresholds, T, between worlds, W-I-T. I looked at that and went, whoa, wait a second, wait a second, where's the C and the H? So Apollo Moonfire and I have been playing with this. Listen to this, no wonder they burnt us at the stake. So women who are spiritually independent, who know how to drop into the threshold between worlds, crack hierarchy right and then there's another one create hope we create hope for our sisters and brothers and our children in the land and then the final the finish the reason we all want to step into our full witchy self we cultivate her return that world that Marcia described where the child is buried with love and devotion and there are no weapons, that's the world pre-patriarchy. That's the world pre-patriarchal religion. Every single one of our patriarchal religions is about the destruction of the goddess. They have murdered the goddess. They have vilified the goddess. They have taken away all of her honor and power. And so, as a witch, I am thrilled to cultivate her return. And if you've read Demetra George's Mysteries of the Dark Moon, 
you know that Demetra is looking at this time frame of 5,000 years and seeing it as just this aberration. Patriarchy is a complete aberration to our human experience and it is coming to an end. This is the hour of her return. So I know it took me forever, Marcia, to answer that question, but a witch is an independent woman who prays in the thresholds between worlds, cracking hierarchy, creating hope for one another, and cultivating the return of the goddess. Do you think I could ever get that in the OED? <laughs> I think the day is coming. Yes, I do. And I tell you all that to give you, because it's normal to, to have a trepidation about that word. I mean, look at my agent, for heaven's sakes, terrified of that word. It, it's taken me two years to really, like, want to wave my flag. I am a witch. I am honored to be a witch. I am thrilled to be a witch. I hope every one of us awakens to the witch within. But, 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 but you can hear me. This is two years. And so the purpose of remembering the song lines of the witches is you don't have to do this alone. And you don't have to take two years to do it. Instead, surrounded by your hex maidens and the very, very special drones who sing the song lines of the hive, we can do this together. Now, shall we chat with Emma? Now, let us open our hearts and minds to the wisdom of Emma. Wow, how do I follow that? <laughs> well, I know quite a few of you here, but I also don't know. There's a few faces and names that I'm like, oh, new friends. So um, Aloha, probably thinking Aloha, that, that girl has a weird accent. Um, I'm originally from England. So yes, you could say I'm a British witch um, and also a Lumerian witch because I reside here on the island of Oahu. Um, I've been here 23 years. Um, yeah, so connected, gosh, the, the witchiness in me, I think is coming through my moon. So I have a Taurus sun. We'll get a little astrology background. Um, so that Taurian sun, very connected to the senses, the body, the practicality of um, medicinal healing. And that really is my background. So my journey has always been very connected to the natural world. I grew up on a farm in Yorkshire, England, James Herriot land. Um, and I would pick flowers and nettles and make tea with my granny and um, tinctures. And that was just what I knew was natural medicine. Um, and I explored that for about 30 plus years of my life. When I moved here, Hawaii and the land, the ley lines definitely awakened something in me. And my husband's native. Um, he's Hawaiian, Chinese, Japanese, a local boy born and raised on Hawaii Island, the big island where Madame Pele is quite a force to reckon with. Talk about a witch. Let me tell you, And when I used to visit my in-laws, the land mass there, if some of you have been, and this is back in 2000, um, it, I used to get terrible headaches. So I would feel, I'm very I'm sensitive, as I'm sure a lot of you are here, that I would come down with terrible headaches because the energy that comes up through the, the mantle of the earth, and it's a root chakra island, that, that life force energy is primal. And it was shaking me up. So, you know, my witchy story was awakened through my Taurus sun, but I have a Scorpio moon with Neptune conjunct. So these eclipses, and Marcia knows because I'm part of her beautiful community. Um, she's one of my greatest teachers. Um, in my pathway of learning and, and awakening my witchy self, of which I believe we all have. I mean, if you're here, there's something that's awakening in all of you. Um, I have not really used that term, to be honest. Um, medicine healer, holistic teacher, a soul guide, a wayfinder for women in midlife, um, many names. But I do believe that 
you know, we all have some witchiness in us. And I think, Mar Marcia, these eclipses have been so powerful that it is awakening that, that Scorpio moon within, within me. And I'm sure all of us, actually, we all have Scorpio somewhere in our birth chart. So, um, you know, I've been friends and journeying with Janet since 2008. Um, and we've, that was, that was a weird story. I'll just show a little bit my background with, with Janet is I gifted myself, um, of course. Yeah. Every May I kind of scroll and think, oh, I'm going to just do some, something to feed myself. And I came across Janet's website and she was offering, um, a mini course experience back then called check the box. And I thought, well, oh, Okay. Let's do it. And um, the first call, I, I, Janet, <laughs> I'm laughing now, was a little bit all over the place because she said, I can't stay very long. I'm flying to New York. My son is up in this federal court and he's about to be imprisoned. And I was like, whoa, I don't quite know what I'm getting into. <laughs> do I want to stay with this kind of somewhat crazy lady? Sorry, Janet, I say that with love, but I'm like, Anyway, I stayed, I stayed, and here we are. Um, one of my teachers, actually, Kumu Karen, Lealoha Carol, one of my Hawaiian teachers um, that, that passed a few years ago now. I, would, I went to her and I said, you know, we need help for this new teacher and her son. Um, would you be willing to come and share Ho'oponopono, one of the beautiful Hawaiian practices? And she said, Emma, I'm passing it to you. You have my blessing. Um, to share it with Janet. And that really was the story 2008 years ago. And here I am um, still yeah, collaborating and sharing with, with Janet and Marcia. And, you know, my, my part in this really, yeah, and Susie, Janet and I have been having talks since about February. It's been five months that we'd meet maybe once a week for hours and just share what was moving through us. I connect um, through the plants for sure. I've licensed in clinical aromatherapy for about 30 plus years and Ayurvedic and many different um, forms of natural healing. And I always come back to that. The astrology has been woven in probably in the last six years because it was always really heady. And I started my journey with a young boy, actually a kid, really, in his uh, beginning 30s, um, Tyler Pennell um, and the Living School of Astrology, because it felt very natural for me to be like in the earth rather than my head in the sky, which is why I love Marcia so much, because, you know, I, I try and. I'm ever learning and that student, but then I want to bring it down into, okay, what are the plants saying? How do I embody it? How do I live it? How do I use it day to day? Um, and I connect through the medicine of the sacred wheel. So I kind of hear the plants through Mary Magdalene. She's been one of my teachers. Um, and I'm blessed to live very close to a sacred Hawaiian temple. A heiau, and that's where I go and I connect and it's a powerful um, la'au, lapa'au, Hawaiian healing temple. Some of these heiaus are not so um, welcoming and they're kapu because um, of, of many reasons, but this one was, was dedicated to plant medicine and healing. And lo and behold, it's just at the road. So I take my cup of tea and I go up there and I just gaze into the beautiful pine trees and, and the, the, the pohaku, this sacred stone circle. And I connect through with the plants. And Mary Magdalene was like, yeah, you are to kind of create and reawaken some vibrational medicine to support this journey of everyone remembering the witch self and the song lines, what are the song lines? Vibrational ley lines that run throughout the planet that we all remember through connecting, listening, feeling, hearing. 
And I very strongly heard that word and kind of just blurted it out with Janet and Susie. Um, I don't quite know why, but I know it's linked to the bee medicine and the path of pollen and the melissae. And um, this oracle elixir that um, I'm actually going up to the hay out later today to charge and infuse the oils. But yeah, Melissa and Melissa is a very potent medicine that's supporting this journey, along with myrrh, sweet myrrh, which is linked to the Murrafor lineage. I don't know if anybody knows here about Murrafor, but it was a sacred um, sisterhood of priestesses that would help um, and use plant medicine to transition loved ones to the other side, crossing the veil. And Mary Magdalene was the queen of the Murrafor lineage. Um, so we've got myrrh and we've got beautiful Melissa, and then myrtle, this myrtle oil, which is fairly new. I've drunk tea, but we've got two forms of myrtle. And when I hear this, I go, well, let me, let me feel into the vibration. When we look back at, at myrtle, the spiritual form in the plant medicine, it was used in ancient lineages, Marcia, with the Romans and Greeks. They would kind of plant myrtle trees to welcome Inanna and Venus and the goddess in her pure form. So, of course, they're the three plant medicines. Um, so there's lots of collaboration here. I don't, I'm mindful of time, but... I, I trust you'll all journey. I'm journeying in raw form too. This is not about us teaching you. It's very much about us journeying together in an experience. Um, and Mar Marcia, you, you're going to be sharing the celestial wisdom in only the way that you can, right? I mean, speaking to the star of medicine. And I, I do want to just point out, because my dear goddess friend that lives here too is on. I don't want to bring her on because I know she might still be in her PJs. But um, there is also vibrational minerals and gemstones and talismans through the Divine Mother that is infused with our beautiful sister energy, Geraldine Camarillo, that um, is on island. And she hears the Divine Mother through prayer beads. So there's other medicines that are part of this collaboration. And I know Geraldine's on, but um, yeah, that there's lots of tools to awaken um, within you. Here's a nice little picture of it because it's hard to see when you hold it up in front of the camera. This is a, a prayer. It is a memory device. And so very quickly, these are our four moons. These are the 11 witches and the seed medicines we will receive. But you see this incredible amber bead. This is you. This is your 12th witch. And then why not have the entire thing talk about an infused pendulum? So, woo, it's so thrilling to work with you, Geraldine and Emma. This is so <clears throat> much. And I'm sure I'm not the only one here today really feeling the need to bring it all into the heart. Let's just take a moment and just breathe. Let's breathe out whatever we don't need to focus on or try and understand that doesn't seem central so that we can really hear what's calling us out of all that's been said, what's speaking to us, what may be asking us to even to, to get to know it better. Just let's breathe for a minute. Let's breathe in through our feet. 
Just breathe in from the heart of our Earth Mother. Feel our connection to her. She's a witch herself. Bring her breath up into our heart. And then just release it. Breathing out through our crowns to the heart of the universe. Just take a few breaths. Let yourself feel the breath moving through you. Let yourself feel how you are a one of a kind, unique and indispensable connection between heaven and earth. And as you do that, just hold all you've just heard a lot, so much. And just feel in and see if there's a question that you'd really like to ask or to have answered. And if you do, we'd love to hear it. Anyone have anything they'd like to ask about all that Emma and Janet have shared and about this journey that they've referred to that's going to be starting um, at the end of this month? I had a question. Yes, Kathleen. So you talked about the four moons, but you only mentioned three. Can you talk more about? So um, impressed that you noticed that. It's such a big, I'll show you a picture of it as I answer the question, because it makes it a little easier. This is the insignia, the logo, the journey that we will be on. So the dark moon is at the top because every we, we will gather at the dark moon, the Saturday before each dark moon, to meet a witch and learn about their medicine, their shadow, their story. And so we will meet 12 dark moons and really study their chandra, what magic is in that particular sign and Chandra for each of the witches. This is the symbol of your natal moon. And Emma is going to give us in tiny doses, 10, 15 minute doses for the first three lunar cycles, ways to really become intimate with your natal moon. What's the element? What's the sign? What's the house? What message is she carrying for you? And my part as a prayer artist is to develop, receive really, a prayer for the natal moon. And we journey over here to, oh, my baby, Black Moon Lilith. Same thing. Emma's going to give us in bits and pieces, just little tastes because it's so rich. Where is Black Moon Lilith on your chart? How do you find her? What message is she carrying? What's her Chandra? What's her message? And of course, her prayer. And then took us a while to kind of come up with this cool image that Apollo came up for, your progressed moon. The progressed moon is always moving and Emma's gonna help us find her, walk with her and track her over our time together. So she's your magic. So this is your sweet mother, your witch mother and your magic mother. Does that help? Yes, yes, thank you. This is the most intimate exploration of moons that I'm just slightly ecstatic about. And the fact that we get to do it 
incrementally, slowly, and we'll be gathering in small groups, small hexes, anywhere in the world, wherever people want to meet, and having conversations with one another. What does this mean? What is my natal moon holding for me? What is black moon holding for me? Freddie's hand is up. Freddie, you want to unmute yourself for Marcia? So along that same line, is this where, because I know something was mentioned about how uh, we're going to learn to channel and become a quote sort of medium. Is this through our progress moon? The medium it? piece is um, largely bring, coming to us through Susie. So Susie had this dramatic witch awakening during the pilgrimage last summer to honor her calling to be a medium. So she dove in, like all good witches, she's obedient. You want me to do what? Be a prayer artist? You want me to be a witch? You want me to be a medium? You want me to move to Hawaii? Okay, off we go. And so, and I'll describe it as best I can because Emma and Marcia and I have had an experience of being with Susie. In the Return of the Witches pilgrimage last summer, I received the names of the 13 witches, mostly in deep soul writing, sometimes in a dream, once in a while in the night. But I was given the list, and that's where we went, and that's who we met. This time, the witches are choosing us. The witches are stepping out of time. Now, um, how, how, how are we going to do that? Mediumship. Mediumship. So the way it'll work, Freddie, is those who want, nobody has to, but if you're like ecstatic about a particular person in history, um, Hypatia. Hypatia is a really interesting woman, uh, a student of Pythagoras, and she was tortured to death and murdered because she was brilliant, probably the most brilliant woman at the time. I'm going to say like three or 400 CE. I could be totally wrong about the dates. But the religion powers at the time murdered her, eliminated her. So let's just say that you were like, whoa, Hypatia. I would love to receive the seed from Hypatia, the shadow from Hypatia. I would like to spend an entire dark, cir dark moon circle, lunar cycle with Hypatia. You would then enter her name. And in a mediumship experience with Susie and her mediumship partner, Ramsey Chidi in Montreal, we would receive her name, maybe five, six, seven, eight other names, but we wouldn't see them. This is where it becomes like magic. Instead, Susie will hold up a piece of paper with a number on it. And every single one of us will just feel into it. Oh, number one, eh, nothing. Oh, number two, whoa, number two, what's, whoa. And then, she compiles all of our reactions to these numbers and the ones that that sparked us that reached the most hearts she then opens the piece of paper and there's Hypatia so it's mediumship it's the dead talking to us and it's a brand new experience I don't know if any of any of us are mediums but this is a exciting brand new and every witch of, in all time, when we're in the threshold between worlds, what are we accessing? The dead. What were we murdered for? Going to the graveyards and praying for our dead, talking to the dead. So mediumship gives us this glorious, rich way to invite a witch to come forward, give us their name give us their medicine. Now, does that help? Because I'm not the medium, but I have experienced this and Marcia has too. And we've all looked around going, whoa, is this fabulous. So that's the mediumship 
piece. I don't know. Now, it's possible that a few of us might realize a call to become a medium and want to study to be a medium. And Susie's going to teach us, give us little tastes of it. Did that answer your question? It did. Thank you. I'm excited. Anyone else? Emma, anything you want to add or Janet? Well, you know what I'd love to add? I'm just looking at Susie G's kind of profile picture and I'm like, oh, look, there's like a mandala or a mandala or kind of a, a crystal grid. And I mean, I think there's going to be a lot more that is impossible to share because each time I've met Susie and I don't know Susie that well, who is, who is beautiful and gifted. I just think, just be open. If this is feeling like a yes somewhere in your body or heart or mind, just trust and join us because I'm along for the ride too. I just know it's going to be magical. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what else is unfolding, but, um, I think it's going to be a magical mandala, a mandala of um, yeah. remembering. Yeah. Because that's the heart of it. Yes, Susie brings us things and mystical traditions that she knows. Emma brings us mystical traditions that he kn she knows. Marcia is going to be at all of our ceremonies, bringing us what was the celestial wisdom? What was going on when this particular witch was alive? What's going on in the Chandra for their dark moon? So Marcia brings us, Sabin brings us, everybody is bringing us wisdom. But in the end, in the end, it's you. Visualize how the bees build a hive. It's the maidens that do it. They build the hive. And that's why Marcia and Emma and I are not able to definitively go, okay, you're going to learn this and you're going to learn this and you're going to learn this and you're going to learn this because you are the ones creating it. We are the ones creating it. And when I have a discovery, an awareness in my little cell, so to speak, my little, then that magic moves through the entire hive to one another. So we are the hex maidens creating, remembering the song arts of the witch. I do see Marcia. I know Suze, Suzanne Arnold had asked, why are we not using the sacred number 13? And then there's another question about, uh, I don't know if you mean, Michelle, about is the replay, this replay being recorded? Certainly the recordings of, of remembering the song lines, yes. Janet's amazing at that. There'll be lots of resources and recordings, but yeah. So I just was scrolling through the chat. Thank you, Geraldine, and for nudging also me. Also, this call will be recorded and that, re that replay will be sent out um, to my email list and... Um, and I'll have it on my YouTube channel. Well, it'll, it'll be in lots of places, easy to find. I want to speak to the 13, the, cause of course that is just her number, right? But from the top of her horse, Jen said 12 witches, 12 moons, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Okay. <laughs> Jen gets what Jen wants. However, when we then went to the calendar, and we open on the summer solstice of this year. It's a Tuesday. And so we will be having an opening ceremony at two o'clock Eastern, which covers most of the globe. We have members so far stretching from Hawaii to Finland and two o'clock in the afternoon brings most of the globe has the potential to be live, but of course it's recorded. So we looked at these 12 lunar cycles. And it ends because Jen said it has to end on the land. And so it's going to end under the summer solstice sun in England at Beaver Castle on sacred witch burial ground 
of the witches of Belvoir, who were executed as witches by the sixth Earl of Rutland, who decided in the 1600s that a servant family must have murdered his children. Of course, history proved later that a guy did it in order to marry the sole remaining female heir and take over the castle, right? Old, repeating, constant, horrible story. Well, those witches want to be remembered, and so last year, Susie participated in a ceremony to plant trees for them. So summer solstice to summer solstice, 12 lunar cycles. However, not everybody can travel to England. So on the 13th dark moon, and there's your sacred, precious completion of 13, we will mirror the opening ceremony and have a closing ceremony for everybody around the world. So 13 dark moon cycle. Yeah, that seems the perfect closing of the circle comment, unless... Unless there's prayer, yes. unless there's prayer, because we have to close with prayer. And all the moons have been sending me their prayers. I thought you might enjoy, it really just came in about an hour and a half ago, the dark womb mother. This is the prayer for the black moon. Dark womb mother, birthing this new cycle of life. I open my mouth to receive this seed. I open my heart to heal this wound. I dance with my shadow. I dance with my life, turning and returning, turning and returning. I am born and reborn into love. Beautiful. Thank you, Janet. Thank, Thank you, Marcia, for joining us today. Really wonderful to spend this hour with you all. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Emma. And I, if you Google Remembering the Songlines of the Witches, it will take you to the webpage where there's lots more information. And that link will be posted with the recording or sent out in the email. Uh, but a go just simply Googling, remembering the song. <laughs> or it's on my website. Just go to JanetConnor.com. I'll show it to you quickly as we say goodbye and Marcia ends. This is my website and this is a, there's a massive amount of information here. And lots of fun videos with Emma and Susie answering all your questions about remembering the song lines of the witches. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, everyone who came and shared some of your day with us. Hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.